Well, Together You and I is one of my favorite love songs that I've written, and I've always been a sucker for romance. Don't we all kind of have that fantasy that once you fall in love, it's going to be like forever? And I think people still dream of that even when love goes bad. Actually, it's a song I wrote many, many years ago, and when I actually started to put this album together of very positive, uplifting songs, not just about life and just the world in general, but about love. I wanted to have some real positive, uplifting things. So Together You and I just kind of popped up, and it just seemed to be the perfect one, and then we kind of brought it up to date with the arrangement and the production that Kent Wells did on it, and it made it sound like very mainstream, and everybody seemed to love it the most out of all the ones that we had in the CD, and so that's the one that actually popped this little, pretty little head up and made the first single. The video for Together You and I is really special, I think. It was not my idea. Trey Fanjoy, who actually did the video, had this wonderful idea to do it more of a universal love, of like love between just mankind, just trying to get along together in this world, in addition to actually that uh, male-female or boy-girl, boy-boy-girl-girl, whatever kind of love that, you know, that we find in this world. She also thought it would actually be very universal to actually have it be something that really covered a wider scope. So she actually put together things from all over the world, and we did our part, of course, with all the special people that I'm actually with in the video and I just thought that was a wonderful approach for it and hopefully people are going to be moved by it in every way. The Better Day CD I thought was a good idea at this time because everybody's so down in the dumps and all this doomsday attitude with the economy so bad and all the wars and the bad weather and everybody's just worrying so much about everything. I thought, you know, I am doing a new CD and I didn't want to sing a bunch of sad songs, although I love to write them. And as a singer, I love to sing sad songs. Even when I'm happy, I still love to sing a sad song. But I thought, well, people really need to be uplifted a little bit right now. I need to be uplifted myself. So I started writing a bunch of songs that were really more positive. Even the songs that actually talk about loss, the end result is that I'm going to put these pieces back together and I might be stronger than I know and I've got to get on with it. So I really felt like that it was just a good time to do an album like that where all the songs had a wonderful message of hope. And there are several songs in the CD that I especially love, and kind of getting back to what I just was talking about, how people are so down and, and feeling so doomsday-ish and hearing people talk about the end of the world. Of course, it's going to come one of these days, but nobody knows that but God, not some silly fanatic somewhere telling you that the world's going to end tomorrow. I choose to try to have faith that I need to try to make a difference in this world, at least uh, when it does happen, I can answer to God in a, in a sensible way to say, hey, I did the best I could trying to love my fellow man, trying to make the most of who I am and the gifts that you gave me, and tried to do good. So the, the song, in the meantime, kind of talks to that, and that's one of my favorites. Another song is The Sacrifice uh, that talks about kind of what all people that are dreamers, people that dream of being successful, whether it's in show business or any other form of business where you, you know, really try to make it, you have to work night and day in order for that to happen, and you make a lot of sacrifices, so the song Sacrifice is also very important to me, along with all the others. They're my kids. I wrote them all, and I always say my songs are my children, and I expect them to support me when I'm old. I have been so lucky that I've been able to do so many things in this business. I've had a chance to do my music, write my songs, which is what brought me out of the mountains. Everything I've ever done has been because of a song and my music. And I had, I've had the wonderful opportunity to get to actually do movies. I get to do Broadway. 
I wrote a, a musical, which I was very proud of. The fact that I got to do it, that I could do it, that I had the opportunity to do that, and then my theme park, Dollywood, a lot of the business things I've done. But it all started with a song. So, I, you know, once you get in a position to do things, it's great. And, and they're all very important to me. I often get asked, you know, do I have one thing that stands out? I'm very happy uh, about the Imagination Library, my literacy program, books to for the children. Uh, but to actually say that one thing means more to me than the others, I don't think that's true because it takes all of that to make that whole little thing that is your career, that is your life, and, and, and it's all important. I get asked probably as much as anything about my long marriage. I met my husband in 1964 when I first came to Nashville. We married two years later, and we're still at it. And people always want to know the secret. I always say, I stay gone, stay apart. You can't be in each other's face all the time. <laughs> actually, I think that has actually been the, the best formula for us is the fact that we appreciate each other when we are together. We don't have to be together all the time. He's a very independent person. I'm a very independent person. He's proud of who I am and what I do. I'm proud of him for who he is and what he does and how we do it. And when we're together, we're really good friends. I do believe that that is the key to most all relationships that last a long time. You got to be great friends and you got to be able to be accepting and just kind of know that you're not going to change that person because you married them because that's, you loved them for what they were. So don't get into that relationship and then start trying to change people. Just say, okay, it's time for me to get out of here. Don't you need to go to the barn? Or he'll say, don't you need to go on the road? So that's how we do it. We just don't let things boil over and we get out of each other's space in time. Well, as a songwriter, you respect and appreciate the writings of other people. And I often get asked, you know, are there songs out there I wish I'd written? Yes, many of them. Every time I hear a great song with a great line, with a great hook, I know that I should have thought of that before they did. And I'm always thinking, why didn't I think of that? Or I should have wrote that song. And of course, there's tons of them out there, especially like, let's like say when you hear a song that's just incredible, like uh, I Hope You Dance, things like that. And a song like uh, Sometimes uh, All I Need, you know, is, you know, the air I breathe. Sometimes all I need is the air I breathe and to love you. Or songs like Sometimes When We Touch. I honestly have to say, I think that song, with anybody that's had, that has deep relationships with other people. There are those things where you, you're just so connected to each other that you, you're you separate, but yet you're not. And anything that goes on in that relationship kind of pulls and tugs and you, you know, there are those things that have, you know, those feelings that you can't express. And when Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde wrote that great, great song, which I assume had to do with their relationship, because they've been together so many years. Uh, it's a song that I just thought, man, that is so deep. That is so real. That is so touching that I've always wished that I had, I had written that song. Well, at the CMA Fest, I had an opportunity to meet uh, and greet a lot of my Fans. I didn't actually get a chance to get out and sign every autograph like I used to in the early days. I was at the very first fanfare 40 years ago, and it's not true that I have not been at fanfare in 30 years. I've been in and out of there doing different things, even walking on with other artists and performing, but I hadn't had a chance to actually just say, call it a meet and greet. I used to have my booths set up at the fanfare in the early days, and I would go every year. My sister Cassie had my fan club set up there, and we would do our little things, and it was great. But of course, because of my fans, I got very busy. I got very successful, thanks to them. And so you get out in the world, and usually when the time comes for fanfare, you're booked somewhere else, or you're in the middle of a movie or something where you actually can't get away. So this was fun that I was actually in town 
performing or working on my tour and doing actually the finishing touches on my CD and promoting that and doing a lot of stuff. So we were in Nashville. So it was only right that we took the time to get over there and see as many fans as we could. And so I just want to take this time to say thanks to all the fans, the ones I got to see and the ones I didn't get to see. Just know that I'm loving you all the time. Appreciate you always. The Better Day World Tour is going to be a lot of fun because we've been on tour with, you know, two or three times in the last few years. And I know it, it would be stale and kind of redundant to just do the same old things over and over. Of course, I have to do the songs that you expect to hear, like Jolene, I Will Always Love You, Nine to Five, Code Many Colors. All of those songs are just givens. But we wanted to do some different things. So we have worked up some fun stuff, some little things that my fans have not had a chance to see me do. I even do a little bit of choreography that I'm not used to, not usually doing in my shows. And of course we've got some fun things where I interact a little more with the band where we play, you know, different little instrumentals, a bluegrass segment. Of course we have our home segment, but we've got some fun things and some surprises, I think, and some stuff from the Joyful Noise movie. I do a, a few of the songs that we do from that. We've done some little medleys and talk about that and so I think it's going to be fun and entertaining certainly to my true true fans that love to see me do anything different I think they'll have a few little treats I have talked for years about writing my life story as a musical and I actually have been writing songs for that for years now and I write down dialogue all the time because I'm sure that I'll be very involved in the book the story, uh, the book they call it, and also uh, for in the production of that, because it's very important that it be right in my mind. So that's why I'm taking the time. I'm going to have it pretty much completed before I decide on directors and get all the other people involved. But I thought it would be a wonderful way to tell my story. And of course, I want that to be on stage for sure. But I also would love to do a movie of my life that also has the some of the pieces of the music in it as well. So it's actually two things and hopefully I'll get a chance to at least sing all the music for the movie and then have some great person like maybe Kristen Chenoweth to do it for stage and who knows who might be in the movie. It could be any number of people like Reese Witherspoon, we'll get her a big old boob job. Or uh, Scarlett Johansson, who's got some nice ones, but we can, you know, pump them up a little bit. But by the time I get it done, they'll probably be old women, so I'll be thinking of some new people. We'll see. <laughs>